Okay, so there's a further use of this kind of in statement that's to test truth and falsehood. Um, so let me let me just make an input. I'm just going to store this in a string. So I'm going to say that. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to make a variable called user input. That's the result of an input with a prompt. And I'm going to say uh, push t to print. Okay. So what I really want is for if the user pushes t, I want this to print something. Oh, and I guess I should be polite and put a new line in there just to kick the cursor to the next line, right? So I really want something like if user input is t, then we should just print out like, thanks for pressing t. Oh, and I guess I should capitalize that to be consistent. Okay, so is this gonna work the way I expect it to? Why is it whining? Wrong equals. What What's the equals I have doing? Oh, so I want the question equal sign, not the make it equal sign. Right? Yeah, so that the double the double equal sign is a comparison check, right? And the single one is a value force check. So I'm like, okay, so push T to print. T enter. Okay, cool. If I run it again, if I do capital T, it doesn't thank me for pressing T. Why? Oh, okay, so how do I check for capital T? And? <laughs> yeah, or and would require it to be both, right? Um, and it can't be both because it's gonna only be one or the other. So how about this? Is this gonna work? Okay, so if I hit run, push T to print, uh, I pushed F, and it thanked me for pressing T. It's got to be a fluke. I must have pushed T too. Okay, so let's try T. T works. Okay, good. Uh, F? Um, guys, okay, something's wrong here. Okay, yeah, so that's exactly what's happening. So this first thing is checking is the user input variable exactly equal to t. This second thing is, or is does the idea of capital T exist? I mean, yeah, the idea of capital T exists. So that's always gonna evaluate to true. I think if I do this, Now it won't, it still won't register capital T, but it should register lowercase t. So why does an empty string count as false? This is kind of a philosophical question. Kind of. Um, maybe let me let me rephrase that. What number would count as false? Yeah, probably zero. 
So how many characters make up the empty string? Okay, so does the empty string feel like the zero of strings? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Grace has this one for us. Grace, what's the special property about zero with addition? Yeah, un undefined would also be treated as false. Um, but this is defined, it's just empty. So when you, when you add zero to a number, what happens? <laughs> yeah, no, it stays the same, right? So the zero is what's called the additive identity, right? If you if you add zero to a number, you stay that you stay at that same number. If you add the empty string to a string, you stay at the string that you're at, right? So there. They're both the additive identities, and that's like a false thing in Python. So because, because the empty string is a lot like zero, it gets treated as false. So what's going on here is that second part is always treated as false. If I put in a number there, like if I put in zero, it'll run exactly the same way. So if I push T, it'll thank me for pressing T. If I put in F, it won't do anything because it's treating that, that second part as always false. And so then it's only checking the first thing. If I put in a different number there, like negative three, then it'll act the kind of same way because negative three is not zero. So it always counts as true. What if I put zero and then type zero? So if I put the number zero, and then type the number zero, like this. Yeah, so that, uh, no, it would be stored as a string, but it's not checking the user input against zero. So maybe if I put parentheses in here, that would help. So that's what's going on here, right? So it's, is the user input equal to the string T or is zero true? Zero is always false. So the only thing it's checking is that first thing. If I put in one, one's always treated as true. And so it doesn't matter what the first thing is. It'll always, it'll always thank me for pressing T. So the, if I wanted to do this with the user input, I could do something like, or user input equals equals T. You guys see that? So now if I hit run, I'll get this push T to print. So if I push capital T, it works. If I push lowercase T, it works. If I put in, oops, if I put in something else, it doesn't do anything. Okay, but this syntax sucks, right? Because if you, if you wanna put in four or five options that the user could press, like, you know, you have three or four different control schemes that might be okay, or you want them to, you know, say yes or something. And there's several kind of um, words that they could use for yes. Like they could, you know, if I'm asking the user to push, like, maybe let me instead say, let me instruct the, oops, let me change my user instructions to say yes to print, right? So then I'd want something like, if it's lowercase y or capital Y, or 
if they type yes, or if they type yes with capitals, or you guys getting this? This is gonna be hella annoying, right? Yeah, I mean, it's even easier than that. You can just do if user input in, and then make your list of correct answers. And I guess just for Andrew, we'll put in this one because he always says yes. And I guess we should put in this one because we can, oops. Right, and this is a little bit easier process to add kind of other things, right? So now if I push go and if they do one of these, it works. And if they do something else like it won't work. But if I wanted that one to be a, a possible answer, I could just go ahead and stick it in the list. And then if I try it, oops, <laughs> helps if you <laughs> helps if you type the thing you say you're gonna try. Does that thought process make sense? Okay, so if you're looking for, um, especially in text-based games, you have lots of these like, do you want to go to the next room, right? Then you can just do, if the user says one of these things, then you run the like, go to, you know, go to next room function and else re-request their user input or uh, or send them to a default room or kill them or whatever, right? I would do that with if and else, right? It's because they're, um, there are many more ways to not be in this list than there are to be in this list. Um, you might do three options. So in text-based games, you probably want something like, uh, if the user input is in the kind of yes list, then we do, you know, thanks for, saying yes, if the user inputs in this other list of like no adjacent things, then we do something else. Like we say, you know, you know, sorry you feel that way or whatever. And then we have some kind of third case of like, just, uh, you know, if they didn't say anything, it makes any sense. Then you do something like print, you know, what? Uh, and you can do this recursively, which is probably a good idea. Um, so, Yeah, it should be. That's kind of the right way to do this. If you, um, so if you prompt for user input and, uh, you know, you can even write one function to do this and then just use it over and over again. Right. So just write your, you know, yes, no function, return true if they, so if I was going to do that for this, I'd be something like, I'd be trying to define a function like uh, something called yes or no, right? And then that whole thing is just gonna do, we're gonna get some user input. We're gonna, you know, say yes to, 
maybe just say yes or no, right? And we might even pass along a, some kind of prompt here. And then you do, all right, so thanks for saying yes. And then we'll return true. And sorry, you feel that way. And then we'll return false. And then if they say something nonsensical, we'll print what, and then we'll call this function again, right? So we'll make it call itself. And that way, if I do one of these, like I just need to call it once to get it to actually work, right? So now it'll tell me to say yes or no. And if I say, um, it'll say, what, because that was the kind of default option, right? And then it's gonna call itself. And then I say, okay, uh, hi. And it just calls itself again. And then if I say yes, it says, thanks for saying yes. And then actually this thing became true. You guys see that? So if I wanted to use that for something, I'd do something like uh, if yes or no, go to room one or something, right? That's not a function in this, so it's not going to work. But that would be that would be kind of how you would use this. You guys kind of with me on that game design? Yep, exactly. Um, and if you want to have a default, and I probably would, you know, give them binary choices and just have, you know, go to room one, go to room two are the options. And then you can kind of have your decision tree. Um, and go to is probably a crappy, uh, I guess I'd probably just call those room one and room two. Right, and then you can write out your narration for room one and room two, and then ask them a, ask them a choice, right? Do you pick up the thing or not? And then if they pick it up, then you do some kind of like add it to their inventory. And if they don't pick it up, then you don't add it to their inventory. Does that thought process kind of make sense? Okay. So feel free to snag this thing. Um, if you want to snag this, this definition yes or no function for your game, that's totally fine. Um, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's probably several ways to define this thing. Or sorry, there's probably several architectures that'll work for this. What did you do that was super different? Mm -hmm. So you have a while loop and recursion? That's overkill. You could get away with either one or the other. You had to press Y for every time that you didn't press Y. I'd have to look at your exact structure. Uh, my guess is, were you using a return?
Yeah, so the return will break the whole thing. So whenever the return happens, it'll collapse all the other function calls. Um, so if you're not returning something, yeah, it'll get obnoxious because it'll um, it'll continue calling itself. And then once the outside one resolves, then the previous one needs to resolve. Uh, and the, the easiest way to resolve a stack of called functions is just to return something. And then it just pops back through them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little, it gets a little confusing, I think. Recursion is one of those things that, like, um, it is fundamentally and structurally powerful programming-wise. It is hard as hell to wrap your head around how it works. I guess that's the advice I have for recursion here. If you can get it to work, it's amazing. And if you can't, it's super obnoxious to try to debug. Okay, anything else, guys? Okay, cool. Um